Hello and welcome to the Capitol Report on NTD Television. I'm Steve Lance. The Republican-led House of Representatives today barely passing a bill protecting women's rights. It prohibits biological males from competing in female sports. And NTD's Melina Wisecup has more for us from Capitol Hill. Melina, you had a chance to speak with uh, some lawmakers supporting this bill. What are they telling you? Many of the Congress members that we heard from say that their goal for supporting this bill is to ensure that women have equal opportunity in sports. But for some members, they say the reasons behind their support for this bill reaches further, saying that for them, it's more about upholding core values. Here's how Congresswoman Mary Miller puts it you know, freedom of speech and freedom of religion, but that includes freedom of conscience, and they're going after the freedom of conscience. I want our country not just to survive, but to flourish, and the two foundations are faith and family. Now, the majority of the Republicans that we heard from say they're not intending to marginalize the transgender community, pointing to more practical issues they say they're concerned with, such as making sure that women have the opportunity to get sports-related scholarships or, for example, how female athletes may feel uncomfortable in the locker room. And expose their own bodies to these biological males. They cannot change a person's DNA. And this is a similar message that we heard from House Speaker Kevin McCarthy when he was pressed about how the transgender community may be impacted by this. On the flip side, Democrat leader Hakeem Jeffries says he believes that the issues like this should be left up to the professionals. The relevant organizations involved in elite sports competition to do what they do. All Democrats oppose this bill, and the White House says that President Biden will veto it, calling it discriminatory. We did get a chance to hear from a few female athletes who have been directly impacted by this. Here's what they told me. I had to compete against them throughout all four years of high school. I raced against them over a dozen times. I was never close, but then once I lost out on the opportunity to qualify for the New England Regional Meet, that was my final straw, and I said, I need to stand up and not only fight for my own fairness, but for everybody else, because at that time, there was no real voice out there. So the third time it happened to me, I decided I'd had enough, and it had actually financially impacted me. So I, I decided to speak up. I didn't think anyone would listen. I made a social media post. Within like five minutes, it went viral on the internet. And this comes as the Biden administration is actively trying to go in the opposite direction uh, on this issue, proposing a rule change uh, to Title IX, uh, tell us more about this. It would essentially prohibit schools across the nation from being able to uh, ban transgender athletes. But this rule change is in the beginning steps right now. So if it does survive this process, it will take months, if not years, before schools and students see its impact. Steve, back to you. Melina, thank you. An IRS whistleblower reportedly wants to testify before Congress. He's alleging political interference in the Hunter Biden investigation. And NTD's Arian Pazdar spoke with a former IRS agent to learn more about the agency's internal workings. The attorney for an IRS special agent sent a letter to Congress seeking whistleblower protection. He wants to share information about alleged political interference in the Hunter Biden investigation. According to the letter to Congress, the agent has details that show politics improperly infecting decisions and protocols that would normally be followed. Federal prosecutors have been investigating Hunter for years. They considered bringing charges against him for tax crimes and more. During investigations in 2020, Hunter Biden said he was confident that a professional and objective review of these matters will demonstrate that I handled my affairs legally and appropriately. Representative James Comer responded to the new whistleblower reports, saying, We know Hunter Biden engaged in deceptive business schemes. The Oversight Committee will hold accountable anyone in the administration who may be covering up this criminal activity. To learn more, I spoke with former IRS agent Mike Sullivan. So it's not clear what the whistleblower might say, but it looks like he might allege the federal government of telling the IRS who to investigate and who not to investigate, Hunter Biden in this case. Mike, is this something the federal government does? Yeah, I think they, they've done this from the beginning of ages. I think right now with having the media and the exposure and all the social platforms, the things that were hidden before 
are now really coming out to light. Senator Ted Cruz now wants to see suspicious activity reports, or SARS, writing, the U.S. Department of Treasury needs to release every suspicious activity report related to the Biden family. Now, Republicans want to see those SARS records. What could those records tell us? What could we learn from them? We can learn all the dirt is what we can learn and probably the truth. But you got to remember, records show up and records disappear. And by now, when you know there's investigations going on, you can clear servers, you can clear anything you want and only turn over the documents you want. The House Ways and Means Committee is expected to meet with the whistleblower soon. Arian Pastar, NTD News. A former Trump lawyer is suing the now disbanded House January 6th Select Committee. Stefan Passantino represented former Trump White House staffer Cassidy Hutchinson when she testified before the committee. Now Passantino is seeking $67 million from the House panel for allegedly creating a false narrative about him and damaging his career. To discuss, we had a chance to sit down with Jesse Bennell, an attorney for former President Trump, who also represents Passantino in the lawsuit. Jesse Bennell, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me here. Jesse, if you could just give us an update on the uh, lawsuit that you filed on behalf of your client, Stefan Passantino, uh, against the January 6th committee. Stefan is, is an absolutely excellent lawyer. He is uh, well known as a uh, political ethics constitutional uh, attorney who has um, been building an excellent reputation for decades. and. Um, the January 6th committee decided that they wanted to, to go after him and target him in a completely baseless manner. And in fact, um, they went after him because he was originally uh, Cassie Hutchison's uh, attorney. Um, and they wanted to make up a narrative that somehow he did something improper in representing Ca uh, Cassie Hutchison. When in the, f uh, the truth is, the fact is, he never did anything wrong at all. And in fact, what happened is Liz Cheney and um, other members of the committee set up an illegal, unconstitutional uh, sting operation against him. And this is, this is all available on the record um, that the January 6th committee had, where they tried uh, to get him to, to come in while representing uh, Cass, uh, Cassie Hutchison and somehow obstruct um, her testimony or somehow um, uh, threaten violence or something against a January 6th committee uh, member. And he did none of those things. Matter of fact, he represented Cassie Hutchison for over 20 hours of testimony uh, in front of the January 6th committee and never um, did anything that was obstructionist. And so when he, when he didn't uh, obstruct in any way, they decided that they were just going to to convict him in the court of public uh, opinion and try to destroy his life and destroy his career when he had done nothing wrong. And they did this without ever giving him an opportunity to respond to the allegations and charges uh, uh, that they were levying against him. And so we are really proud at the Banal Law Group to represent him and to start fighting back against that. And the way that we're fighting back is we filed a Federal Tort Claims Act in Congress saying that what the January 6th committee did to this man was unlawful, unconstitutional, and they need to, to make it right and, and to compensate him for their attempt to destroy his, his career based on no facts and no evidence at all. What would be the next steps, Jesse, if they do not respond to your complaint, say, within the next six months? That's a great question. And if they don't respond in the next six months, then we will file a lawsuit in federal court. Um, and at that point, it will be up to the judiciary to, to vindicate um, Stefan and, and, uh, and his career and to, to make sure that he's properly compensated for what he went through. And if I could just ask, I mean, this is sort of a separate issue, but I want to get kind of your legal uh, view into a lot of the footage that was released. I believe it was Tucker Carlson's program that highlighted a lot of it. People are saying that there's exculpatory evidence uh, built into that. Um, it, it, what's your take? Well, I think that's right. I think that um, the January 6th committee, I think, purposely wanted to withhold any evidence that was exculpatory to any January 6th defendant. I think they were taking specific acts um, to make sure that, the, that prosecutors never had to produce um, evidence that would be helpful to the defense, even though um, the government is constitutionally required 
to uh, provide uh, the defense with that exculpatory evidence. And what Tucker Carlson was able to, to do and what his excellent team was able to do is show more of a full picture about what happened on January 6th, which is very different than the fiction that was put out by the January 6th uh, committee. And uh, they really should be embarrassed by the politically motivated hit job um, that they produced in, in their committee, and they should be held to account for it. Jesse Bennell, thank you. Thanks for having me. Families coming before Congress to urge justice for their loved ones, what they reveal about China's suppression at a congressional hearing, and what lawmakers are vowing to do. And today's Iris Tao brings us more. At a Thursday hearing, lawmakers on Capitol Hill try to bring renewed attention to political prisoners in China. Among them is human rights lawyer Gao Zhisheng, who is known for defending faith groups like Falun Gong and Christians in China. After being detained and tortured for years, he went missing in 2017 while under house arrest. His wife is urging the U.S. Congress to help her rescue her husband, who is reportedly in secret police custody. And Congressman Chris Smith recalls Gao's work from a letter from almost 15 years ago. But it was a letter to Congress, and he talked about how what was happening to Falun Gong uh, was unspeakable, and he went through the tortures. And, and described what they were doing to individuals. It's only gotten worse since then. And for that, they threw the book at him even more. Also testifying at the hearing is the wife of Ding Jiaxi, another human rights lawyer who was just sentenced to 12 years in prison by the Chinese regime. And Congressman Rich McCormick telling NTD's Melina Weisskopf why Americans should care. The very products we buy sometimes sustain very evil people. This is shocking to most people if they're paying attention, but most people unfortunately are not paying attention. Reporting from Washington, D.C., Iris Tao, NTD News. Thank you for watching the Capitol Report. If you want to see our full broadcast, check us out at epochtv.com.